Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now keeping all these points in mind, let us try to calculate the location of center of mass for few objects. So let us look at this first problem 1. The problem says give the location of the center of mass of a sphere, cylinder, ring and cube each of uniform mass density. So uniform mass density plays the key role here. What do you mean by uniform mass density? That means the mass is spread uniformly throughout the object. So that means we are talking about homogeneous bodies. Now we know that for homogeneous bodies, the center of mass will lie at their geometric center. So that means for this sphere, this will be the center of mass. For this cylinder again, the geometrical center of the cylinder. Similarly for this ring, the geometrical center is this one, right? Similarly for a cube, even if you consider a cube like this, the center of mass will be concentrated at this point. So here we are talking about homogeneous objects. So therefore center of mass will lie at their geometric centers. So the first part is done. The next part it asks, does the center of mass of a body necessarily lie inside the body? So what, that you can answer looking at these figures. Do you think that the center of mass will always lie necessarily inside the body? No. That's because if you look at this ring, this is the center of mass. But the body of this ring is only this part. Right? I mean, you can take out your bangle and see the example. The center of mass does not lie inside the bangle. Right? Because the bangle is, it is hollow from inside, it is just the boundary. So if I say that something lies, center of mass lies inside the ring, that means the center of mass should lie somewhere here inside the ring. So the center of mass lies outside the ring, right? So it is not necessary that the center of mass will always lie inside the body. For example, if you look at the sphere, if the sphere is a solid sphere, then we will say that yes, the center of mass lies inside the body of the solid sphere. But if we are talking about a hollow sphere, which is empty from inside, in that case we will say that the center of mass does not lie inside the body of the sphere. Right? Are you getting my point? So the ring was the best example which I mentioned, but otherwise in case of the sphere or the cylinder here, the center of mass is lying inside the body. Let us look at the next problem. It says that in HCl molecule, the separation between the nuclei of the two atoms is 1.27 angstrom. So what are the two atoms in case of HCl? Hydrogen atom and chlorine atom. So it says that the separation between the nuclei of these two atoms is 1.27 angstrom. So that means this distance is 1.27. Find the approximate location of the center of mass of the molecule given that a chlorine atom is 35.5 times as massive as hydrogen atom and nearly all the mass of an atom is concentrated in its nucleus. That's pretty fine, right? Because in case of an atom, the nucleus is the one which has the maximum mass because the electrons are very small mass. So now let us suppose, let us suppose that this is my center of mass. So let C denote my center of mass. So this is point C. So what is the distance of chlorine from C? Let us suppose the distance of chlorine from the center of mass is x and the chlorine of hydrogen is, would be 1.27 minus x because this whole distance is 1.27. Right? And according to the definition of center of mass, so how do we define center of mass? The center of mass will be defined by its own coordinate x, right? Because here we do not have any involvement of y axis or z axis. So this x will be given as m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2. That is how we determine the center of mass. So what is m1? Let us suppose 1 denotes the mass of hydrogen and 2 denotes the mass of chlorine. So m1 is the mass of Hydrogen, let us suppose that mass of hydrogen is M. Let us suppose this is M. So what would be the mass of chlorine? It would be 35.5 times of M. So this will be M into X1. What is X1? 1.27 minus X plus 35.5 M into X2. What is X2? That is X. 
this divided by m1 plus m2 that is m plus 35.5 m. So what would be this? So this is your center of mass, correct? We have assumed that this is our center of mass and we have also assumed that this is the origin. By considering this as origin only, we have considered this as x and this as 1.27 minus x. So if we have considered this as origin, then this should be equal to 0, right? So now if you solve this, you get 1.27 minus x is equal to minus 35.5x. So from this we get x is equal to minus 0 0.037 angstrom. So this is the distance. So this is the value of x. So this will be my x. So therefore we can say that the center of mass lies at a distance of 0 0.037 angstrom from chlorine atom. So this is the position of the center of mass. So what did we do here? We assumed that let us suppose that the center of mass is located at this position and we also assumed that this is the origin. So if we consider this at the origin then we can measure the distances of these two atoms from the origin. At the same time my center of mass coordinate should be equal to 0. So we equated it to 0 and that is how we calculated the value of x and found out the approximate location of the center of mass. Let us now look at the third problem. It says that find the center of mass of a uniform L-shaped lamina with dimensions as shown. The mass of the lamina is 3 kgs. So if you look at this lamina, this is the L-shaped lamina. So this L-shaped lamina actually consists of three squares, one, two and three. So these are the three squares which together form the lamina. And you can see that the center of mass of each square lies at their geometric centers because it is a uniform lamina. That means the mass distribution is uniform. Now for homogeneous bodies, so for these squares, this C1, C2, C3 are their centers. Therefore, their center of mass are located at C1, C2 and C3. Right? So, let us first find out the coordinates of the center of masses. By looking at this figure, we can say that the, what is the coordinate of C1? It will be on x-axis, it is 1 by 2 because this entire thing is 2. That means this is 1. So, this will be 1 by 2. So, it will be 1 by 2 and what is y-axis? In y-axis, this is 2. That means this is 1, so that means this is again 1 by 2. C2. For C2, this will be 1, this is, this will be 1 plus 1 by 2. That means the x coordinate is 3 by 2. What about the y coordinate? It is 1 by 2. For C3, for C3, the x coordinate is again 1 by 2, but the y coordinate is 1 plus 1 by 2. That is 3 by 2. And what about the masses of each of these C1, C2, C3, M1, M2 and M3, each will be equal to 1 kg because the total mass is 3 kg. So that means 1 kg plus 1 kg plus 1 kg, right? So each of the masses is 3 kg. So now we have to calculate the center of mass. So let us assume that the center of mass is given by the coordinates x and y. So here we have got x1, y1. This is x2, y2 and this is x3, y3, right? So therefore x as per definition is nothing but summation of mi xi divided by the total mass. So this will be equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 divided by the total mass. So what is the total mass? Total mass is 3 kgs. So this will be equal to m1 is 1 into 1 by 2 plus m2 is again 1 into x2 is 3 by 2 plus m3 is 1 into x3 that is 1 by 2 divided by 3. So this comes out as 5 by 6 meters. So this is the value of the x coordinate. So similarly we will calculate the value of y coordinate which will come out as m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 divided by the total mass capital 3 right so this y will come out to be again 5 by 6 
meters. So therefore we can say that the center of mass of the lamina is given by the coordinates 5 by 6 meters and 5 by 6 meters. So this is how we determine the center of mass of a rigid body. Right, so you understand the concept of center of mass that how do we calculate the center of mass of a system of particles? How do we calculate the center of mass of a rigid body? Now with this, thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.